I greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we happy to be in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, I welcome you to the arena of liberty. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For those who don't know me, my name is Tendo Genis. Makananisa Simono. Hallelujah. Amen. I am one of the pastors of here in Charis Missionary Church. I stand here before you today because I was ordered to do so. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I believe you and I, we are going to share the word of God together. And God is going to lead us and direct us to our respectful place where you want us to be. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have pastors in this place? Can they all stand up and we clap our hands? We appreciate them. Can we clap our hands and appreciate the servants of God in our midst? Pastors, we thank you for your presence and I humbly acknowledge you. Hallelujah. You can, you can be seated. And here at home, we have our pastors as well. As you know, Chari Siki Kereke Yaubali Mahaya Manchi. We have branches all over the world. Hallelujah. We have Prophet Korombi all the way from Rustenburg. They have everyday Sunday services, Rustenburg on Sunday, 11 o'clock. And we have Prophet Victor Duja, all the way from London, UK, in Britain. Hallelujah. They also have services on Sunday. And we have Pastor Mabukela, who's always here with us every Sunday. And we have Pastor Musa Kambule, all the way from Durban. They also conduct services on Sundays, 11 o'clock. And then we have Pastor Mali Hodi, who was interceding with you. She's our pastor here at home. And we have Pastor Lucindo, who's also our pastor here at home. Hallelujah. And then we have Mama Apostle, who's also here with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we happy to be here? Um, I want to share with you a Bible scripture that we all know. But because of life circumstances, we turn our focus and we shift our eyes from the main focus and we end up looking somewhere else. Hallelujah. Do we hear English, all of us? Do we have people who don't hear English? Barona? Okay, then I take it all of us will hear English. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe as Christians, when we come into salvation and coming into accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior in our lives, there is a role or a particular part that we ought to play or that we ought to take part in. But because of the life and the business of life we live today, we tend to forget that in Christianity, there's also a part that I myself have to play for God to be visible in my life. Hallelujah. Most of us, when we get saved, we tend to believe that whatever that has to happen pertaining my Christianity, it only has to do with what God wants to do. Which is true, but we also have a part to contribute in the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says it is by grace that we have been saved and we have been called into this grace of salvation. So for us as a Christian or for us to maintain this Christianity that we have received through grace on the cross, 
through the blood of Jesus Christ, there is what we call faithfulness to the, our salvation that we have to have. Are you hearing me? As we are called into salvation, as we are saying we are born again children of Christ, we have to be faithful to his calling. Faithful to what we are saved into so that this Christianity can now come into reality in our being. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says God is a covenant keeping God. Now I to believe that in a covenant is an agreement between two people where God has to play his part and I also have to play my part. Because if I don't play my part, it means there is no covenant. Covenant, I mean agreement. If I don't play my part, that which we have agreed upon cannot happen. Because a certain part is lacking in the act. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, it means me as a Christian, I'm saved by the blood. Yes, I'm sanctified by the blood. By his grace, I've been transformed or translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Yes, it's true. But for me to remain in this kingdom that I'm transferred or translated to, I need to be faithful. I need to be faithful. Ask your neighbor and say, are you faithful? For Christianity to fully mature in me and manifest to the outside world to see Christ in me, I need to be faithful and remain faithful. The Bible says the world is eagerly waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Not particularly pastors or prophets or apostles or evangelists, but sons and daughters, including me and you, in everyday life. Now the world cannot see the manifold wisdom of God the creator unless you and I are faithful. Our faithfulness is a pledge of our agreement that we made with God when the day came where we said, I accept you in my life as my savior. Now in return, because you saved me and cleansed me from my unrighteousness, I will remain faithful to you until the end. Hallelujah. Now the problem is when challenges rise in our lives or when challenges happen in our surroundings, we forget the covenant we made in the first place. We forget the agreement that we made with God that I will remain faithful until the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me? Let's open our Bibles in the book of Genesis 17. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 7. Are we there yet? Can I read? It reads, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Three, then Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, 
but your name will be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and will make nations for you. And kings shall come out of you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Hallelujah. Let's quickly go to Job. Job chapter 1, verse 8. Are we there? Can I read? Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear you for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around me, around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions has increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and will you surely curse you to your face? And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went, from, went out from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we bow our heads and thank the Lord for his word? Father, we thank you for your word, for its life unto us. We thank you for this day, for you are releasing us and setting us to a greater height. In Jesus' name, amen. Where we have read, firstly, we read in Genesis, it was a story talking about Abraham and God. That God appeared to Abraham in a vision and said, I am the Lord your God. In the same book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 1, the Bible says, when God appeared to Abraham, he said, I am the Lord your God. I am your shield and I am your exceedingly reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where we have read, it's a covenant that God was making with Abraham. That walk before me, blameless and in honor. And in return, I will bless you and bless your children and your children's children. The Bible says, God said to, 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 to Abraham, I will be your God. Not only your God, but I'll also be your God to your children, to your grandchildren, to your great, great grandchildren. I will still keep my covenant. But what you have to do for me, walk blameless before me. And I will fulfill all that I have spoken and promised to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, this agreement was between God and Abraham. The only thing that Abraham had to do to see the fulfillment of the promise was to remain faithful or to be blameless before God. And only if he is blameless, then God will fulfill the part of his covenant. Like I said in the beginning, when we agree on something, I have to do my part and you also have to do your part. As Christians, God has already saved us and called us into his marvelous light, into his kingdom. And promised or made a covenant with us that he is going to keep us safe. He is going to protect us. He is going to heal us. He will provide all our needs and give us all that we desire. But we must be blameless before him. Meaning, if I don't become blameless or faithful before God, I forfeit every promise that I've made or that he has made with me. Meaning, if I'm not blameless and faithful before God, the covenant he made with me, it's in vain. 
Because I would have forfeited everything that we agreed upon. It's like when you make a loan of a car in the bank, they ask you for a certain man, money or amount every month, isn't it? And you make an agreement that every month I'm going to give you this much. Now what happens when you stop paying the agreement amount? They come and take what? They are come back. You have forfeited the promise. It means the agreement that you made doesn't exist anymore. It's void. The same applies with God. He has saved us. He has called us. He does everything we need. The Bible says all promises are yes and in Christ they are amen. He who has promised is able to fulfill that which he has promised. And the Bible says he shall not tarry or he will not waste time or delay. But it will happen at the appointed time provided we are faithful. Now how many of us that we can stand tall in this congregation and say, I am faithful and I know I am. I'm not saying raise up your hands. I'm not saying raise up your hands. I'm saying how many of us, after we have come to this marvelous light, after we have been saved from our iniquities, after we have received our healing, we have received our blessings, we have received our marriages, we have received our children, whatever we want, our cars, whatever you name it, our businesses, how many of us are still faithful till today? There in the book of Job, the Bible says, God was asking Satan, have you seen my servant Job? A man who is upright and blameless in my sight, who shuns evil. How many of us, God, can ask the devil about us that question? Have you seen Tendo Simono? Can God say that about me? Can God say that about you? That we are faithful and upright and blameless in his sight. And we shun evil. The devil answered and said, you, th you think it's because Job is fearing you or faithful for nothing? It's because you have protected everything that he owns. Meaning Job played his part to be faithful. And God played his part and he was faithful. Job became faithful before God in all he does. The Bible said his children will go and feast. He would still make sacrifices for his children and pray for these children and say, Lord, have mercy on my children. Maybe they have cursed you while they were feasting. Maybe they have said vile words against you, not knowing or unaware. Lord, forgive them and have mercy. He still kept his promise. And God protected everything he has. Some of us, we own businesses. They start well and they are going. And out of the blue, out of nowhere, everything starts crumbling. The question is, were you faithful from the beginning? You get a job, it's promising, the salary is good, life is good, God has transformed and changed you. All of a sudden, you are retrenched out of everybody. Were you faithful when you got your job? Did you play your part of faithfulness to God so you can play his part of protecting all that you have? The answer is no. Because if we were faithful, we won't, some of us wouldn't find ourselves in crisis that we are today. God trusts us with so many blessings and so many things in hundredfolds. He trusts us to extend that he knows if I can give him or her a tender of millions, she will remain faithful. Because that is our agreement. She will remain or he will remain loyal. Because that is our agreement. And God gives it to you. Now the devil comes and say, you think whom whom fears you for nothing. And God, because he trusts you and me, he says, go and take all he has. And see if he will turn against me. 
God does that in faith. But because we are people who at times we take away our focus from God, we tend to fail God. And when we fail him, we now turn again and blame him. Whereas the problem is we were not faithful from the beginning. Some of us, we get jobs. First month, second month, you come to church, you pay your tithe. But the third month, God blesses you with a car. You no longer come to church. Your car goes home every single weekend. Every single weekend, you are on the road going home. You don't even know what you're going to do. Are you faithful? The Bible says, don't forget where others meet. You have already forgotten. You are on anyone going home. What are you going to do home? Was it part of the agreement? And tomorrow when you are involved in a fatal car accident, we tend to blame God and say, where was God of charis when I got my accident? Were you faithful? Some of us, God gives us jobs. We come the first month. The second month, you have already forgotten that God says you must pay your tithe. You have already drawn a budget of everything. You are now talking of couches, of what, what, and dining suits, and this and that. Was it part of the agreement? The Bible says when you are faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. If we are, faith, we are unable to be faithful in the little things that our God is giving us, do you think God will entrust us with bigger things tomorrow? The answer is no. Because we are unfaithful. Our unfaithfulness leads us away from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you with me, somebody? In the book of Proverbs 13, the Bible says the road or a journey of unfaithful men becomes difficult. Meaning it has potholes, it has all these type of things to make the journey or the road difficult. Why? Because your shield, remember God said, I am your shield and I am your great exceeding reward to, to Abraham. So meaning if I'm not faithful, I'm not shielded from anything. I'm not covered from anything. When the devil wants to attack, he has access into what I'm having or into what I'm doing. Why? Because my shield of faithfulness is not with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you read continuing in the book, book of, of Job, after God has told Satan to go and destroy all that Job had, the Bible says Job remained faithful. He lost everything. His children, his wife, his cars, his cows, everything, his houses. He was left with nothing. And he became sick. He had sores all over his body. And because of that, he decided to go and stay among ashes. So he can scratch himself when it itches. But even if it's like that, he remained faithful. Even if it's like that, the world talked against him. Friends came and told him, it's because you have sinned. You need to repent. He remained faithful. Even when his wife told him, insult your God and die. Because there's no point for you to be alive. He remained faithful. Even when everybody has now rejected him and left him with nothing, he remained faithful. My question is, if you and I can lose everything we own, will we remain faithful? Ask your neighbor, will you remain faithful? Hallelujah. If we lose everything we have, will we remain faithful? 
Will we still speak like Job and say, out of my mother's womb, I came with nothing. And from this earth, I will depart with nothing. I know one day I will see my redeemer because I know he lives. Will we say those words and remain faithful? Or will we find amongst the ships that are going left and right, not knowing where they are going? Or when challenges come, we will find ourselves amongst people who are going up and down, traveling the corners of South Africa, trying to find the next Sangoma to help me to regain everything? Or better still, because we are Christian, we will be found among people who will be jumping from one church to the next, to the next prophet, to the next prophetess, to the next apostle, to the next what, what, just to be prayed for, for you to regain everything. Don't forget, the Bible says in every temptation, God provides a way to come out. Now the question is, where are you going when you are leaving him? with his faithfulness where are you going the bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood the holy spirit shall raise up the standard now because we are so unfaithful when the enemy comes in like a flood you have already searched for the next door to exit You already know the exit plan of your situation. That if I can do this and this and this and go there and borrow and go there and make a loan, I'll be out of this. Whereas the answer is simple. Be faithful. Tell your neighbor and say, be faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be faithful. Let's open the book of Deuteronomy 7. We read from verse 9. Are you there? I want us to read in our Bibles. Are we ready to read? Can we read all of us? Let's read together. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Can you read that again? Can you read it loud? Hallelujah. The Bible says that he keeps his covenant and mercy for a thousand generations. A thousand generation. Meaning you and I will be long gone and departed from this world. But God will still keep his covenant. When the children of Israel left Egypt, the Bible says they took many years in the wilderness. And God said to Joshua, tell the children of Israel that I will still keep the covenant that I have made with their forefathers. That I will take you to a land of milk and honey. The Bible doesn't say the covenant I made with your grandfather. With your forefathers. People who died hundreds of years ago. Before your grandfather could come to existence. Those people were existing. But God still kept the promise. That he made to those people. And still fulfilled it. And the children of Israel. They did inherit the land of milk and honey. When God saves us, he says, I have come so that you might have life and life in abundance. He says, I am the Lord, your healer. 
by my stripes you are healed. He says, I am the Lord, your provider. Whatever you ask of me in my name, believing, you shall have and receive. He says, when you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. So out of all those scriptures, which one are we fulfilling? Because before you get desires, you must firstly delight. Before you have life in abundance, you must firstly accept and believe. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that he is Lord. And that he rose again on the third day. Hallelujah. Before you can re receive all, all provisions or everything you need, you must believe that he is your exceedingly great reward. And that he alone can only provide for your needs before you can receive. Before all promises are yes and amen, I have to be faithful. By doing what? By doing that which I am supposed to do. You might be asking yourself, why am I faithful? What am I supposed to be faithful in? Well, God has called you for a greater assignment. Like I said in the beginning, the earth, the world is waiting for your manifestation. So if you're not faithful, how are you going to manifest? You are a pastor of a congregation. God has called you for a certain purpose and for a certain generation. Remain faithful in that calling. How, no matter how small or tiny it is, remain faithful there. And God will take you to greater heights. God has given you a job as a cleaner in a company. You are qualified, you have your qualifications, you have your degrees, your diplomas, you name them. God has called you to that place for greater heights. Remain faithful in cleaning people's offices. So tomorrow you can also have your own. What is the use of giving you an office if you don't even know the setup of an office? You don't even know Rtafla Idula Kai, Situlo Sidula Kai, Drawa Idula Kai, Laptop Idula Kai. What's the point of giving you an office? What's the point of giving you a car if you are refusing to go and do your driver's license? Are you hearing me, somebody? Some of us, God has called us just to come and sweep the church floor. Just to come and sweep the church floor. You see how simple that is? But we know how to place excuses and mountains and potholes and everything just for you to come and sweep this floor. But tomorrow you want to be a great mamruti somewhere. Who are you going to tell to sweep the floor if you didn't sweep yourself? Ask you see if Kilhata the con singer. God has called you to come and pack these chairs and clean them for people to come and sit. Tomorrow you want to be a great leader in the society. You don't even know the characteristics and the character that is required of a leader. But you want to lead somebody tomorrow. How are you going to lead? Tell your neighbor and say, faithfulness is required. Hallelujah. 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 Are you still with me? Tell your neighbor and say, faithfulness is required. He says he keeps his covenant and, sorry, his mercies. For thousand generations. To those who love him and do his commandments. You come here, you get prayed for. You want a job. God only trusts you with a job that gives you 10,000 rand. 10,000 rand. 
you forget the most simple thing you have to do just to pay your tithe. Just to pay your tithe. And you are already praying, God, I want you to remove my HR manager. You say whatever I ask in your name, you shall be given to me. Father, it's my heart desire. I want this, I want that. You are failing to pay your tithe. Just your tithe. How will God give you a job that will give you $100,000 a month? I mean 100000 rand a month. It will kill you. Is that not so? It will kill you. You won't even come to church anymore. You won't even consider praying anymore. Some of us, God bless us with just little tiny things. I mean, tiny things. Mudima ofa I-20. Handei I-20. You now pray in church with your hands in your pockets. Yes, God, you know, yes, I bless your name. I glorify your name. Ooh, you are God. Yes, Jesus. People are driving private jets out there. They call you one day, my fellow pastors, and they say to you, God wants to use you. Go and submit to your pastor. Because it's Apostle Makana Nisa who has prophesied you. Your pastor is now nothing. Yes, you know, this old man don't see nothing, you know. He doesn't hear God anymore. And I decided, you know, I must come out and you pray for me. I start my own ministry. The word said, go and submit. You know, there's something that I always say. We normally say rules are meant to be broken, right? But one thing that we are forgetting, life is not governed by rules, it's governed by principles. Principles, you can't change them. The same principles God used when he started the world is still the same principle even today. If Elisha had to serve Elijah for him to be a greater prophet tomorrow, you will not jump Apostle Makananisa and become greater. It's not possible. Ask yeah. If God anointed Elisha through Elijah, even if you pray, even if you fast, relocate to the mountain it will not benefit you anything your faithfulness is required Amen. even if ukleki yako company your job is only to mark or mali hodu tile tendo tile lusu tile mamuru tile even if you can jump that your job, you don't submit it. You are only damaging yourself because tomorrow it's you they will fire. Not your boss. And in return, I want my God to show you. Why? Why is God showing them? Because you have to give him a platform of faithfulness before he can display anything. What is he going to use to vindicate you tomorrow? What is he going to use? When you don't tithe, what is God going to use to protect you and heal you? Tomorrow we tend to say, Mudimonantiel. We are not faithful. We don't live in holiness and righteousness. And in return, we want God to be blinded and give us everything we want. On top of which platform? Can you build a house in the atmosphere? Eh? Can you build a house in the atmosphere? So which foundation are you giving God to build a house for you? Let's look into the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel chapter 3.
The Bible says there was a decree or a law that says when you hear a certain sound or any sound at all, wherever you are, bow and worship the God that Nebuchadnezzar has made out of gold. And because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were one of the officials of Babylon, and people knew that they are Christians, their eyes were fixed on them to see if indeed they will be faithful to the command of the king. Their colleagues, like your colleague, ran to the king and said, didn't you say when a sound is made, we must all bow and worship the image? The king said, yes, indeed I have. And they asked, how come Joanna yena achono banga mereko? How come Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are not bowing to the image you made? The Bible says, out of fury, anger, he called them. When he asked them, is it true that you didn't bow to the image I made? How come I didn't bow to the image I made? Kuri nampile ka tshwanelo ya bathroom nampile bo mma ba phone ba re ba alwala kuri nampile AJ ya thaka thaka na ka tshwanelo re ke tsa maye makafela but because they knew the god they were serving and the covenant they made with him they didn't lie they didn't search for a double up out they said indeed king we didn't bow The Bible said, Nebuchadnezzar asked them, who is that God that will save you from my anger? The Bible said they answered, even if our God does not save us, we will not bow to your image. Upila where we le long live King Nebuchadnezzar. Lire mudimu waka ka sebonale iwa semone. Ukuna maonanga suile ki kunam. If it was some of us, we would say maralang kavya leto leli wani mofasi. Aibona asingi kunamikuju. You know, it's... Langajwa tinya kurufela. And we forget the covenant that God has with us. Now my question is, if we are not faithful, how will he show his faithfulness? If we are not faithful, how will he Show his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Can we read the book of Psalm? Psalm 119. Can I read? Nkavala. Are you still with me? Can I read? Psalm 119 verse 89 reads, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generation. You establish the earth and its abides. Forever, O Lord, your word is established in heaven. The Bible say all will pass away. Everything will pass away. But his word will remain standing. Meaning the covenant you are making with him is from now to forever or everlasting. And the covenant still stands. 
in heaven? Are you still standing in the covenant with the Lord? Are you still standing in faithfulness with the Lord? Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor and say, are you still standing in faithfulness with the Lord? When we read in Malachi 3, verse 6, the Bible says, I am the Lord, I do not change. I am the Lord, your God, I do not change. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm the same God who created the heaven and earth. I'm still God today. I'm still going to be God forever. I do not change. So why are we changing? If he doesn't change, why are we changing? Yes, I understand there are challenges. Yes, I understand there is rejection. I understand there is sickness. I understand there are disappointments. People don't even want to associate with you. But then why are you going away from his faithfulness? Why are you becoming unfaithful to the agreement or to the calling you have with him? Faithfulness, that's all we need. The thing is, we, because we are Christian, we tend to manipulate scriptures. And by manipulating them, we think we are also manipulating God. And we tend to quote scriptures that only defend you or defend me in the wrong that I am doing. And we tend to think we are manipulating God. The word of God says, I am the Lord your God. I do not change. Change your figure, change your hairstyle, change your cars, change your houses, change your color complexion, change whatever you do, but I still remain the same. The same agreement I made with you, Osali Slender Skrull, is the same agreement I still have, even when you are fed. It doesn't mean because the law is still the same. Tell your neighbor and say the law is still the same. The covenant is still the same. Some of us, we tend to manipulate God. Please allow me to say it. According to us, we twist his mission. God has called you to be a pastor. You saw somebody in your TV or in your YouTube or in your whatever, doing whatever they are doing. Now your prayer is, God, I want to be... Like apostle, God, I want to be like prophet. God, I want to be like what? God, God said be a pastor, be faithful in your pastoring. Be faithful in your pastoring. Some of us, God has called us to be intercessors. Just to pray for the church. You now want to be a prophet. God, show me a vision. My father, show me a vision. You dream, not a vision. You dream a dream. You turn it into a vision. Tomorrow it's a prophecy. 
Your calling is intercession. Stay in your station. Stay in your lane. Intercede. Some of us, we are called to be kingdom financers. When God gives you millions, it's for you to, to finance the gospel, to reach to places where it has never reached before. For other souls to receive Christ in their life. Now your finances are from traveling from post to post. You move from Dubai to New York, from New York to Australia, from Australia to UK. You, you don't even sit down anymore. Remain faithful in your lane. Hallelujah. 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 Some of us, God has only called us to be ushers. When they pray for a person, you take that person, you put that person down. That's all you have to do. Your job is to usher. Let Mamuruti wear her shoes. You wear your own flat shoes. Sure, you can usher us nicely. How are you going to usher me as fat as I am in heels that I'm wearing? Eh? Stay in your lane. Be faithful. Some of us, God has called us just to tell the next person not to preach. Eh -eh. Not to open Bible, Muruti. Eh -eh. Just to tell the next person when the person says, "Whatever can I let my father?" Wow, miracle! Feel like you just The next thing the devil attacks you, Muruti, about to send you away, may meluen. Who said you must pray for people? Remain faithful to your calling. Eh? Remain faithful to your calling. Some of us, we are only you are the only Christian in your family. Your job is to pray for your generation to receive Christ. Ah, eh? When I say to you, Muruti, what can I hear? Your siblings don't even want you anymore. Your parents don't even want you anymore. How about when I learn that the Bible says, "I am one that the conqueror." But to my mother, my turned away. Far, my far, 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 so one anger. Grow very open by all things through Christ who gives me. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. Remain faithful to your calling. God is your exceedingly great reward. In the book of Hebrews chapter 6, he says, I am the rewarder of them that diligently seek me. How will he reward you when you have messed up the plan he had for your life, how will he reward you? Hmm? How will he reward you? Baba Mudimu just called us to come lift up our hands and open our mouth and say, Father, I thank you because I'm still alive. Father, I thank you because I am here today. I know situation don't define who you are to me. You are God regardless of my condition. That's all we are called for. Uh -uh. When I said you really like to go to each other, I said, I'm going to go to the range of How 
will God be visible in your life if you are not faithful? Let me say this one more time. How will God promote you if you are failing to tap in the little yana job that he has given you? Ukumani mmeriko nyana u honore ka role only perfume. Wa pare makwae kwa ya ko Pepsi store u tekereke ngobe butsana nyana. Kana ko ya tithe twa muruto ra tshelete. Re nna be tshelteria e berekela. Le nna ka u rapeleje. And the house no rebel, the God was faithful enough to give you that job. Now you are turning around. Job baruji ba chafu berekali na. You are not perkasto ba berekala ba na ba duji. Eba tum. Be faithful in the little that God has given you. Oh, to tell you the truth, the Christianity we are living is a waste of time. You are being prayed for. You want to be married. You want to be married. Each and every day, ukumana tapel ya ya lenyal. The Bible says, sex before marriage is a sin. Man tapa ma muruti hampun. Wawe yaka for ya masa. How fit hamakuwa na holy holy? Kama swa matelele. Where is your faithfulness? You are not saved for your pastor, you are saved for yourself. Muruja uboni eni, uko mutungwaye, mara mudimu wa ubona. And mudimu is the one to reward you tomorrow, not your pastor. Njoe hulu hulu, that we, basaloni rezeba, nku shupa baruti kaminwani. Rebu chaba aturi, heo usantia ingi ingi. When I was saying, hey, mama, take any local local law. Hey, mama, take side here. But the truth is, we are the own cause of our problems. Mama, take on a level of a barrel. I want you. Or if it wasn't for my mother, I would be married. Eh eh. If you had listened to your mother, you wouldn't be having three kids. Ask you, sine, if you have a child, sorry. Ask your neighbor and say, where is your faithfulness? Are you faithful in the little that God has given you? The little chimunyana field that God has given you to till it and cultivate it and water it and monitor the trees that are growing. Are you faithful in it? Or are you already plucking out fruits? Our problem and faithfulness. And faithfulness. Kabu Shibu will be blaming God and servants of God, whereas we are the ones who are not faithful. Tomorrow we'll be turning to say, Mudimo wa khet. Boma mang ba pila ba blessi. Chwara na lor bona arboni. Are you faithful? Are you faithful? We always say God's time is the best. But while we are waiting for the best of God's time, are we faithful in what we are doing? Some of us, the Spirit of the Lord will lead you to wake up and pray during the night. The excuse you will give is, tomorrow I'm going to work. Or it's very cold. Or I am very tired. Are you faithful? The Bible says, I am the Lord your God. I do not change. It says in some, the covenant and the mercies that he has made the last for a thousand generation. Meaning, if I am faithful, Libo AJ, they will still see God's faithfulness. 
Even their children, they will still see God's. Even their children's children, they will still see God's faithfulness. But am I faithful? Am I faithful? Can we all rise up? Ask your neighbor and say, are you faithful? Some of us, we are seeking for breakthroughs. And God is telling you or laying in your heart, take the 500 you have and give it at the altar. Then I will give you a breakthrough. The minute you hear it, you start binding and casting. Are you faithful to what God is saying? We read about this, the, the story of Abraham in Genesis 22. The Bible says, after Abraham has given birth to Isaac, it was over a hundred years over. God came back to Abraham and said, I want you to offer me your son. The one you love dearly. The one you waited a hundred years to have. I want you to give him to me. The Bible says Abraham took his servant, his son, he left without even telling his wife. He went to the mountain that God showed him. The same Isaac asked, this one we are going for a sacrifice. Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide for himself. The Bible says when he got there, he prepared everything. He tied his own son and put him on top of the altar. As he, he was about to step, the Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared and said, don't harm your son. Now I have seen that you are faithful and you love me. How many of us can do that? How many of us can do that? God gives you a child who becomes sick. Instead of you to think it's God who gave me this child and take the child to the altar. You travel all the doctors of Gauteng. God gives you a blessing asking for your faithfulness in return. Instead, you manipulate it and when it's damaged, when I'm miracle go on over here, come full of full. Where was your faithfulness when it was required? Ask your neighbor for the last time and say, are you faithful? Let us lift up our hands. I want us to go and pray to God and say, Father, help me to be faithful in my calling. Whatever you have called me for, Lord, help me to be faithful. No matter how small it is, no matter how tiny it is, no matter how degrading it is, no matter how ridiculous it looks. Father, help me to be faithful. Prayer, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to be faithful, God. Your word says you are a faithful God. Your faithfulness last from generations and generations. Your word says you are God. You do not change. Help me to be faithful. Father, help me to be faithful. Come on, pray with all your heart. Help me, Lord, to be faithful. Lord, in the little job that you have given me, help me to be faithful. Father, in the marriage you have blessed me with, help me to be faithful. Lord, as I'm still waiting for me to manifest your wisdom to the world, help me to be faithful. Father, as I am still serving in your house, help me to be faithful. Help me to be faithful. Help me to be faithful. Father, in this world that I'm living in, Father, with my neighbors and my family, Lord, help me to be faithful. 
Lord, help my heart to stay inclined to yours and hold fast the salvation that I have. In the name of Jesus, help me to be faithful. Father, yes, I'm still waiting for the right partner. Lord, help me to be faithful. In the little that I'm doing, help me to be faithful. In my prayer life, help me to be faithful. Lord, in your word, help me to be faithful. In whatever I'm doing for the kingdom, help me, Lord, to be faithful. Father, in whatever I am doing pertaining to my life, help me to be faithful. I want to be faithful, Lord. I want to be faithful in my sickness. I want to be faithful in my diseases. I want to be faithful in my disappointments. I want to be faithful in my rejection. I want to be faithful in my betrayal. I want to be faithful, Lord. I want to remain faithful. I want to remain faithful. Help me, Lord, to be faithful. Come on, pray, pray. I'm not hearing you. Lift up your hands and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, help us to be faithful. 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 I want to be faithful, Lord. I want to be faithful. I want to be faithful to the cross. I want to be faithful to your calling. I want to be faithful, Lord, to your will. Not my will, but yours be done in me. But Father, help me to be faithful so that your will can happen in my life. Your will can take part in me. Your will can be revealed in my life, Lord. Help me to be faithful. Help me to be faithful. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let us lift up our hands. Let us lift up our hands. Urine Huta Bela
road of Christianity for a long time. Thank you, Jesus. Those who are before us or we have found us, they've already Thank passed us Jesus. along the road. It seems as if our life is stagnant, is it going anyway? And there are some part of us that is not faithful to God. For him to work and bless us, we need to be faithful. If we know that we are not faithful to him, please run to the front and let him change the story of your life. You know, there are some things that are in your life that have been happening for a long time. You've been praying about it, but nothing is changing. When you check, faithfulness is not found in you. Yes, you're a Christian. Yes, you pray. Yes, you pay your tithe. Yes, you do offer in the house of God. But still, there is some way where you are not faithful. Please run to the front and let God change the story of your life and give you a new beginning. Don't look at other people. Don't look at the fact that I've been saved for years. I've been ministering for years. I've been praying in the church for years. They know me. I'm an active person in the church. Your faithfulness is required. Your faithfulness is required. Let us lift up our hands to the Lord. We say yes, Lord, to your will. I want us to lift up our hands and we close our eyes. We'll be singing a song if you are still left there at the back and you know in the depth of your heart that when I come here, I am not faithful. God is calling on you. He's ready to start afresh with you. He's ready to renew that covenant, that agreement with you. Lift up your hands. Moya waka urie, urie, urie.
Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I come back to you. Lord, I am a sinner. Wash me of all my sins. And cleanse me with your precious blood. Father, yes, I'm coming back to you. Lord, help me to be faithful in my walk of righteousness. Father, help me to be faithful to the calling of my salvation. Lord, I believe that I am your child and I am washed by the blood of Jesus. Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit for me to remain faithful until Jesus comes back again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us clap our hands. Welcome to the family of God. You can go back to your seats. Clap our hands for them. Let us clap our hands. Yeah. 
your hands and praise God and thank him. Thank him for renewing his covenant with him. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness towards us. Thank you, Lord, for you are faithful to us. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for what you've been doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for healing us out of your faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for raising us because of your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for saving us and making us your children. Thank you, Lord, for renewing your confidence with us that will stand generations to generation. Thank you, Father, for I am still alive because of your covenant. I am still alive because of your faithfulness. I thank you because I'm still standing because of your grace. I thank you because I'm still standing because you've been faithful and you are still faithful to me. Come on, pray, pray and thank God and thank God, thank God for saving your life. pray pray thank him thank him for his faithfulness that endureth forever thank him for his mercy that endureth forever thank you for his mercy and his faithfulness that I knew every morning it's not because we deserve it but because he has loved us father thank you for your mercy and your faithfulness that I knew every morning thank you because you are faithful I'm still here Lord if it not been for your faithfulness I wouldn't be where I am where I am today. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, even in the midst of my circumstance and my situation. Father, you alone remain faithful. I thank you because you are God of all possibilities. I thank you because you are God who can change the face of my mountain. I thank you because of your faithfulness, Lord, I can still stand and say, Jesus is Lord. I give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to go and pray and say, Lord, show me where I'm supposed to be faithful. Because some of us, we have already mixed up the things that God has given us. We don't know anymore. It's no longer clear anymore where God wants you to be faithful where he has called you to be. I want us to pray and say, God, show me, Lord, help me find my assignment where I'm supposed to be faithful prayer. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help me, Lord, to find where I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to be faithful. Father, help me to find my assignment, the assignment that you have laid upon my life. The assignment that I'm supposed to operate and the assignment that I'm supposed to be found in for me to be faithful. Help me, Lord. Come on, pray with all your heart. Pray with all your power. Help me, Jesus, for me to be faithful. Help me, Lord. Father, for me to find the way I'm supposed to be faithful. In the field that you have called me, in the vineyard that you have called me, help me, Lord. For me to find it and identify it and be able to serve you in spirit and in truth and be able to be faithful and remain faithful to the cross until the coming back of my Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Help me, Lord, show me where I ought to be faithful. Where I ought to be faithful, Father, where I ought to be faithful, where I have to be faithful, Lord, if I don't know where I'm, I'm supposed to be faithful, Lord, I've already messed up the way, I've already lost the assignment you've given me, I've already lost the vision you've given me, Lord, I have already lost the desire that you've given me, Father, I've already quenched the zeal 
that you have given me out of ignorance and carelessness. But Father, today I come back to you. Help me, Jesus, to find my assignment. Help me, Lord, to find the field that which you have called me for. Help me, Father, to find your way so I can be faithful to the cross. I can be faithful to my salvation. I can be faithful, oh God, to you. Help me, Jesus. Lord, I have lost my way. Help me, Father, to find my way. Help me, Lord, to find my way so I can be faithful to you. Help me, Father, to find my way so I can remain faithful to you. Father, help me to find my way so I can hold fast the salvation of my soul. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I believe as we have prayed, God will show us our respective assignment which we have to execute. Hallelujah. But all I can tell you is no matter how little it is, even if it's out of your comfort zone, you're not comfortable with it, be faithful in it. Remain faithful in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we clap our hands and thank God? Can we clap our hands and thank God? Can we clap our hands and thank God? And thank God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. 